Hi, I'm Randy, the Freckled Californian, and today we're going to talk about the different varieties of narcissus and daffodils that I have growing in the garden this year. I have some daffodils in my garden that I planted way back when we first moved in, and those are still here in the garden and they pop up every single year. But this year, because I realized how much I love these flowers, I decided to try about eight new varieties. So the ones that have bloomed so far, I'm gonna go ahead and document them and share with you which ones I liked and also which ones smell good because this one in particular smells amazing, whereas this one doesn't really have a smell to it. So come along with me. Now, when you cut these flowers, there's actually going to be like a sap or technically a mucilage that comes out. So I have a jar of water right here ready to go to ensure that I don't get it everywhere. And also this will let the flowers rest for a little bit and have the area where I cut, ooh, did you see that? Here. The area where I cut will seal over. So basically that sap will no longer be coming out. This sap is known to be kind of toxic to the other flowers in an arrangement. So it's great to let the scabs seal over and then you can use them for arrangements. Daffodils are also toxic to people and animals. And there's actually been some instances where people have looked at these greens and parts of daffodils and mistaken them for edible things like green onions, which I guess I can kind of see. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. I wanted to take a moment and show you, this is a naturalized patch of daffodils in my garden. And this has been here for a few years now. They come back every year. I don't do anything, there's no maintenance. So this one's pretty amazing. I actually don't think I got this variety in the video because it bloomed so early. Um, I'm trying to remember what this one's called, but you can see they're going to seed now. But I grow daffodils both in the ground and also in pots, so I'll show you the pots. So when I grow these in pots, I actually plan to do a lot of this next fall, um, demonstrating how I did it. But basically, you have a special kind of mix. It has to be light and fluffy. And I also mulch the top with like this gravel because the gravel keeps the critters from digging down into the soil. And it also helps retain moisture because pots here in Southern California just really end up drying out fast. So now let's get to the good part. I know you wanna know all about the narcissus that I'm growing in the garden this year. So here is a breakdown of each one. First up, this is Blushing Lady. You can see kind of the size compared to my hand. And what I love about this one is it grew really well in my garden in a container, but also I love that blushy color trumpet. So this one doesn't have any smell, but it definitely is a beautiful addition to the garden. The next one we have here is the biggest daffodil I have grown, the largest variety I have. This one is called Fortissimo. And this one you can see has the yellow petals and the orange trumpet. It's really big and it makes a huge statement in a vase, which I love. I think it's really beautiful. Now this next Narcissus, just was not very impressive. As you can see, it kind of has deformed outer petals. It hasn't grown super well in my garden. I will say this one was in the ground, so maybe it needed a lighter soil, but um, so I haven't been really impressed with this one. Next, we have this daffodil, which I got from Home Depot pretty much when we first moved in. So I've had this for a long time. This variety has naturalized in my garden. So it comes back every year, super vigorously. It's a great daffodil to have in the garden. The next one we have, this is called Falconet. This one is my favorite Narcissus that I grew this year. The fragrance on Falconet beats the fragrance on the Bridal Crown Narcissus, which I'll show you next, but these are beautiful. They've grown well and the smell is amazing. So definitely I would add this one to your garden. So this one is the Bridal Crown Narcissus. And this one is well known for being a great bouquet Narcissus. I've seen it used in a lot of bridal bouquets or a lot of arrangements. So this one's beautiful. It also smells really nice and it has those great ruffles. So I liked this one a lot as well, but I will say the smell on the Falconet seemed to be a lot better. Last but not least, this beauty. Now I might mispronounce the name. I think it's Delib, 
but I'll put it up on the screen. This one is gorgeous because the trumpet has two colors. It has the orange ruffles and the yellow. I really like this one and so far it's doing really well. This is my first year growing it and it's growing in a terracotta pot. So those are the narcissus that I have in my garden right now. I'm still waiting on a couple others, but I did want to do this breakdown just because it's so much fun. And I wanted to capture these while they're really blooming in the garden. All right, so this is very exciting. I just found this one in the garden, so it's a different one. This is Tahiti. And I am so glad this just bloomed because it is a stunner. There is no smell to it but look at the ruffles and the layers. Here it is with all my other daffodils that I had earlier. So that's another variety, Tahiti. I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of the Narcissus in my garden. I will continue to add new varieties. This is just such a fun plant to grow. And on top of that, it's something that's low maintenance and comes back year after year. So please, if you like content like this, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon.